I think it was back in 2016 that I wandered into an Academy Sporting Goods store, as I commonly do. I wanted to see if there was a scope that might work for one of the projects I was about to put together. And on the counter, they had a bunch of binoculars. So I was like, okay, I need a new pair of binoculars. I'm gonna see what they have out here. So I picked up a pair of Steiners and I was glassing around the building and they looked pretty good. And then right next to them, there was a pair of Bushnell Trophy. I think they were Trophy Extreme binoculars and the price was considerably less than the Steiners, and I'm thinking, okay, well, we'll see what the budget conscious, you know, sort of uh, binoculars looks like nowadays. And I popped them up to my eyes, and I kind of had to do a double take, because when I, when I pulled them up to my eyes, suddenly it just seemed like everything was brought closer. I could see just all kinds of details. The colors weren't messed up or anything. Everything was just a natural color, it was natural light. It just felt like whatever was on the other side of the store just kind of zoomed up to my eyes. And so I picked up the Steiners again and I'm glassing around. Then I pick up those Bushnells again and there really was no comparison at all. The Bushnells had completely blown away these others. And I checked out a few others on the shelves and these Bushnells were just out of this world. Apparently, this was a revamp that Bushnell was doing. They had taken their trophy line and their trophy, the new Trophy Extreme line, and they had come up with something entirely new. They had replaced all the glass. Apparently, they had replaced some of the mechanicals. They had done all kinds of things. And this was the beginning of what we're seeing now as the what I call the Bushnell Revolution. Uh, they have revamped everything in their lineup by this point, and their stuff is just frankly amazing. What you see on my bench here is a pretty wide array of what Bushnell offers in terms of scopes and each one represents something really special especially when you consider its price point. I've talked before about the Bushnell Banner 2. This is the cheapest scope that I think that they make. This comes in, okay you have the Banner and I haven't looked through one of the revamped banners yet. I've just been checking out the Banner 2 but uh, for about a hundred bucks out the door that includes tax you can pick up this 3 to 9 by 40 and the image through here is much, much better than you can imagine. So if you go into your local Walmart or your local sporting goods store and they have one of these things, you really got to take a look uh, because, yeah, the image is just far and away better than what you might be thinking. Uh, it collects a whole lot of light. It has excellent coatings, including on this one, the exo barrier that they have now. Most of the scopes that you see on here actually share the same lens coatings. They may not have exactly the same lens quality, but they're going to have fully multi-coated optics, and they're going to have this exo barrier on the outside that prevents dirt, debris, uh, it tends to resist scratches. You can't really stick anything indelibly to these lenses. Uh, with some of the ones in the past, even if they had really good lenses and really good coatings, if you got some kind of uh, bad solvent on your fingers or some kind of oil or something, maybe you, you know, got a fingerprint on there a long time ago, sometimes that would actually stick and it wouldn't ever go away. I remember my brother had a, uh, a little camera that, um, I think it was a little Canon camera, and a kitten touched its nose to that lens, and the lens was never the same ever again. It had this nose print that we could not get away with any kind of solvents or anything. So yeah, the exo barrier on this is... Uh, just amazing and especially that they have it on this less expensive scope down here at the bottom and that's just one of the tricks that makes these scopes so darn good to look through it seems like they have gotten into some new uh, grinding processes and i don't think they actually grind them anymore i'm thinking that they're using this new panasonic process uh, for shaping the lenses and they don't seem to have that grind pattern uh, obvious in the scopes anymore uh, they also just seem to have set up everything a little differently with their apochromatic setups on the higher end ones. It just seems to reduce a lot of the chromatic aberration that you're going to get with, you know, budget scopes or even some of the better scopes. It's going to reduce a lot of that color fringing. It's going to produce higher resolution than they ever have in the past. And like I say, each one of these represents a step up from what it used to be in the past. And in most cases, a pretty big step up over everybody else in the industry. These produce images that I think will just frankly shock you if you put it up against anything from the other competitors, the other big uh, scope manufacturers. 
If you put them side by side, I think you'll be blown away by what you see through these. I'm about to release a series of reviews on each of these individual scopes if I haven't done a full review already. Today though, I wanted to talk about the lineup, how it works, and how you might want to pick one of these scopes within the lineup. And one of the things that I should point out first is that no, Bushnell is not paying for this. Uh, what they've done is they've sent me these scopes over the years for review, and I'm just you know, so happy with how they've worked out for me that I just want to tell you guys how they work. I think it might help out a lot of you guys, especially if you cruise into that local store and you want to, you know, pick something up off the shelf. Uh, you're going to be doing pretty well if you pick up a Bushnell that's in that lineup. So let's start with this. Again, we have that Bushnell Banner 2 for roughly a hundred bucks, you know, maybe stepping up just a tad for one of the higher magnification models. Like I think they have a 6 to 18. For the most part, your banners are going to be a three to nine setup. I think they have maybe a one to four as well. They have some uh, lower magnification models. But yeah, for the most part, you're gonna have a three X zoom ratio. And these are gonna display a, a very good image. Like I said, you're gonna get much higher resolution than you might expect. That resolution does carry very well out to the edges, falls off just a little bit. Brightness edge to edge is quite good. The mechanicals, uh, they don't feel quite as smooth as some of the higher end ones that you see here, but for the price tag, they're actually much better than you might expect. And one thing that I need to point out across the entire spectrum here is that I have tested these in various scenarios, including my box test, where I have tracked the uh, the turrets up and down, left and right, to see, number one, are they gonna come back to zero? Are they gonna maintain zero? Under firing, are they going to uh, retain zero without moving around? And are they going to track reliably if I use these to adjust for a shot? Like if I need to make a longer shot, if I need to adjust for windage, are the turrets actually going to work? Every single one of these works perfectly within you know 90% of you know my own accuracy. I think that actually they're probably more accurate than I am in setting up my box test. Uh, at the correct distance. So if anything's messed up, it's probably actually my uh, my target and not so much these. Uh, these just seem to track perfectly reliably. And I've tested these in some pretty extreme scenarios as we'll talk about here in a bit. Down here, especially on the lower priced end of the scale, you're gonna see some barrel distortion. That's going to be where you get some curvature at the edges of your image. So if you have a line that should be perfectly horizontal, you're gonna see a little curvature as it gets to the edge of the image. And that's gonna be typical on a lot of your lesser expensive scopes. It doesn't matter who makes it, you're gonna see some curvature there, especially on a fixed parallax sort of scope like these two. Uh, where you have a 100 yard parallax fixed in there. Anything that's closer than that is going to show increasing amounts of barrel distortion. That's just natural. But uh, I just want to let you guys know that it's there. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. Yes, these have a lot of resolution. They collect a lot of light. They work well past dusk. But uh, yeah, they do have a little bit of curvature. If that bothers you a lot, then we can step up the scale some. Uh, but yeah, we have the banner on the, you know, the kind of cheapest end of things. You step up to the legend and the trophy, and you're going to start, you know, jumping up by increments of maybe 50 bucks, 25 bucks, somewhere in there to pick up a scope uh, that should have maybe a little bit cleaner mechanicals. It may feel a little bit more um, uprated. And for me, the image actually doesn't jump up. I think the banner is probably gonna have uh, that lesser image and then you're gonna have your trophy and legend. But actually this banner too should compete really well with the trophy and the legend, which is pretty funny to think about. But then if you wanna get up into something that really takes up uh, the qualities of these scopes and just kinda takes it to the next level, you gotta look at the primes. You're still looking at a very good budget scope. This one right here, including an illuminated center dot, comes in at 200 bucks. And that is not too shabby at all. This is a three to nine by 40. This absorbs all kinds of light. It has an even better image than that banner too. Has the exo barrier. It even comes with some of the, the cool extras like the flip caps that you see here. I think it comes with a lens cloth too. And it just kind of continues that same theme of perfect tracking through the, uh, the turrets here. And it's just kind of cool to have the option of illuminated reticle. I think if you get the non-illuminated, it costs about 150 bucks. And I can highly recommend this. Oh, and one thing that I, I really should mention about all of these is that I think every single one of these is IPX rated or IP rated. So this actually has been tested 
in a lab to see how they perform against, in this case, water. Some of them are actually tested against dust as well. And uh, we, most of these, I think, on the bench are IPX7 rated. That means that not only will they be able to deal with you know, fog from your breath or rain or splashes, you can actually put these in the shallow end of your pool, leave them there for a half hour, fish them back out, put them back on your rifle and get back to work. That is how good the waterproofing is on these. I think there's only one level beyond that and they don't even really test for exactly how long you're gonna be underwater. Uh, so yeah, if you are looking for a hard use scope, these are going to uh, fit the bill quite well. As we step up, okay, so we have the Prime. Um, I have tested the Engage before. That's the next one in the lineup, and they have all kinds of uh, tactical models. They have some 30 millimeter tubes, and they have some one inch hunting scopes. They kind of stick with the same lightweight kind of setup that we have right here, but you get into some even better glass where the image is just pristine and you uh, start to get into some mechanicals that can do some extra tricks, like uh, you know rolling side focus and uh, just yeah all kinds of extra little goodies. And you get into some really cool reticles on those as well. There's also the AR Optics series, and these kind of sit in their own category. These are designed for your uh, your ARs, your tactical shooter types. Uh, you know if, if you want to be able to get into some more interesting reticles and have more of the features that a tactical scope should have like uh, you know turrets that you can use for adjusting for some of your longer shots then you're going to get into some of these this is where you find the lpvos the low power variable optics that have the tiny little uh, objective lens out here and you're going to get into some that have 30 millimeter tubes this one's a one incher this is a four and a half to 18 and uh, this little guy, yeah, good zoom ratio and i have used this to test 223 loads uh, 57 by 28 it's just been a solid little scope. Uh, this one does show some of that curvature, like I mentioned, at the edges. So if you're concerned about that, just know that it is in there. But otherwise, the image is quite good. Then we start to step up to some of these that uh, really get into different build qualities. And this is where I should point out that the different lines in the, the whole Bushnell lineup, uh, some of these are made in different places. Like the Banner 2, I think this is China. Yep. Yeah, that one's China. I think AR Optics is China. This one doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But some of the others that you see here are made in South Korea. Uh, this one, uh, the Bushnell Primes are made in South Korea. The Nitros are made in South Korea. Uh, I think these two are China. And then this one is Japan. So as you step up to the Elite Tactical lineup, those are, I think, all made in Japan. But here we go from South Korea with love. This is the Bushnell Nitro. This is designed to be a hunting scope, so you're going to have cap turrets. Uh, this is not really for dialing out in the field, even though you absolutely could. Again, we have a really good waterproofing on here, IPX7. And yeah, you get uh, this dial that doesn't track up and down. So again, it's, it's probably not for you know, adjusting your shots in the field. This is more for setting it up beforehand. And it comes with extra tricks like the toolless reset, uh, for your zero, this comes with side parallax adjustment. This is a 3 to 12, and you're going to have a couple of other 4x options like that here in the Nitro. Uh, most of the things that you see down on this end are going to be 3x zoom ratio. This is a 4x, and the image through here is just beautiful. Um, I think probably the, the biggest difference that you're going to notice between the Nitro and the forge aside from the zoom ratio this one's going to have a little bit of tunneling it doesn't quite uh, fill the eye completely but you still seem to get the same kind of resolution through this as you would through the forge it really picks up all kinds of details so if you are doing some longer range hunting you're going to have some pretty cool reticles through here uh, you're, you're going to get the deploy moa or the deploy mrad this actually has a first focal plane reticle as well so if you are looking for ffp i think there might be one engage model now that has it uh, but aside from that you're probably going to be stepping up into the uh, the nitro end of things that's where you're going to finally find some uh, ffp an ffp reticle like the deploy moa ffp reticle in here is going to be just excellent for dealing with some of those more difficult shots as distances increase and you have more elevation to deal with and windage uh, you're going to be able to do that so you could actually use this as uh, a varmint scope you could use this as a predator scope you could use this on deer especially at some of the longer distances 
and uh, yeah you'll be able to do it very accurately without actually having to dig into the uh, the turrets here and stepping that up just a little bit we have the 6x zoom ratio of the forge i think there's a, a 6x and then there's one with a 5x as well you have different uh, zoom ranges that you're going to have in here this is a four and a half to 27 big old 50 millimeter lens out on this one and this thing is just gorgeous i'm going to talk about this in a couple of other reviews that i'm doing uh, this has an image that is far better than you can imagine this one does still show just a little bit of barrel distortion out at the edges as you might see in some of the images that i'll put up here but it's still going to be extremely precise designed for long range hunting it's designed for folks that are you know out in mountainous or plains areas and want to make a difficult shot on say uh, an antelope or maybe you have an elk at a longer distance this has an ffp reticle you do have uh, second focal plane and first focal plane options and by the way if you want to see what the difference is between ffp and sfp and really hear where you might want to choose one over the other i'll put a link to one of my videos up here uh, because i tried to break it down not just telling what the technical difference is but why you might want to choose one over the other and where it might work in different situations this is going to have the milliradian deploy ffp reticle and i've used this to make shots at all kinds of distances um, you can use the turrets if you like which are locked uh, you just pull up on these to unlock them and then you can spin this has a zero stop snaps down into place we'll talk about that more in the full review but this is a stellar scope really well built great optics beautiful image you can see all kinds of details like mirage if you're trying to take that uh, difficult shot for you varminters and target shooters there is a version of the forge that backs things off from the 6x zoom ratio down to four this is a 6 to 24 by 50 millimeter scope and this thing is amazing i have used this in a variety of scenarios where i've needed to make very precise shots like shooting eggs at 400 or excuse me 300 yards and doing some ladder load workups at 400 yards and I can rely on this in all those situations something about this parallax adjustment makes it so that I can just really lock in on a target if you're not familiar with some of the downsides of what can happen with parallax um, if you have a fixed parallax scope for example you may move your eye just a little bit around in the eye box back here and your crosshair will no longer be pointed right at the target. You'll actually kind of be able to see around it. This one locks in tighter than I think any scope that I've ever used. If I get this dialed in just right, and it's very easy to do so, all I have to do is just roll until the focus is looking right to my eye and this thing is just plain locked in. Um, yeah, I can move my eye around in the eye box and the, the crosshair stays exactly where I left it. This scope, just has perfect tracking and it's going to make those very precise shots at whatever distances i need although this is a good time to point out the limitations of some of the scopes that i've shown here so far i think that the reason we have some of the prettier images through all the scopes that we have from the match pro on down is that not only have we increased the quality of the glass and the quality of the coatings but i think that we have some bigger lenses than you're traditionally going to get in a lot of these scopes and so you're not going to have a whole lot of adjustment uh, the ar optics one here i think this one does have a fair bit of adjustment but especially these three uh, it's very limited and we're going to talk about that in the full reviews but if you want to make extreme long shots like you know these will probably get you with a a decent short action cartridge out to about a thousand yards if you want to get beyond that you're probably going to run out of at least the the tracking on your turrets you're not going to be able to go any farther uh, you're going to have to start using the reticle in order to make those longer shots and that is where we step up to elite tactical these are mostly going to be 34 millimeter tubes on these and these take all of the attributes of these scopes put it all into one and these are going to increase your adjustment range as well. It's also going to increase the weight quite a bit, but this scope that you see right here, the XRS2, this is going to compete very favorably with pretty much anything from Europe. Uh, this is Japanese made. Everything about its controls is just smooth, tight. Uh, it, all the clicks on here are just wonderful. This has a zero stop. 
that'll uh, stop this exactly at the, the right point and continue to kind of spin up. So if you need to make a really long distance shot, you can turn this as many times as it'll go and it's not gonna you know, stop again when it gets to zero. But uh, yeah, this is just something else entirely. This is a four and a half to 30. So this has the highest zoom ratio, I think of any of the scopes that they have in their lineup. And this has extra tricks like a locking diopter here at the back. So if you wanna make absolutely sure when you go out to take that shot, that nothing has been bumped, nothing is messed up here. You get extra tricks like the throw lever. And I gotta tell you that in the cold, whew, this one is tight. <laughs> This one's going to take a little effort, so it's nice to have that throw lever. 50 millimeter lens out here, and this is where you can get into some really good FFP reticles. This one is my favorite reticle. This is the Tremor 3, and I've talked at length about the Tremor 3 and Tremor 5 reticles. These are amazing for making precise hits on targets at... Uh, in all kinds of winds and at all kinds of distances. We've used this to get on target at a mile with 6.5 Creedmoor. And even if you're dialed all the way to the extremes or if you're looking at the extreme edges of the image, you can still see all the details that you would straight through the center. So Mirage, no problem. You wanna keep an eye on targets off to the sides, no problem. You're dialed to an extreme, no problem. It's gonna cost a good bit, and I'll put the, uh, the price tag of what this is going for right now, if you can find it. Um, but yeah, well worth it, even when you compare it against things that are, say, double its price out on the market. All right, uh, I, there are a couple others, like there's the new Elite 4500 that has come out, and I haven't looked through one of those yet, but I imagine it's gonna be fantastic. Uh, the 4000 series is one that they had back in the day, and it looks like they're kind of reviving it. It's gonna be something a little extra special for the hunters. It's probably gonna have just a beautiful image, be a little bit simpler than the uh, Elite Tactical. It's not gonna have all that stuff, and I imagine it's gonna weigh probably about the same as the Forge, possibly less. We'll, we'll check out some of the details and maybe one day uh, put our eye through one of those scopes. But thank you all very much for uh, checking this video out. Make sure that you come back and see the individual reviews uh, because I have done extensive work with some of these. I've been able to test these in real world scenarios. I've been able to use some of these out hunting and doing target shooting. And uh, I think you'll, you'll really appreciate some of the, the time that I've put into these and the box tests and all that stuff. An extra big thanks to patrons of the Destructive Arts that have made this testing possible, and I will see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.